guys and welcome to what is probably the fourth or fifth time I've tried to film this video. This is my update video. This is where I've been, what's going on and a kind of just a... I don't want to say a brief summary because I don't want this to be brief. The last few months have been hell and I don't want to gloss over that. I don't want to make it sound like my life is perfect because Owning horses, having a full-time job, doing a degree, and trying to balance a relationship and a social life is not is not easy. And I think we often see it romanticised and like glorified on social media. And uh, I don't want this to come as a reality check. I don't want to be like that girl, but it sucked. And uh, I feel like unless you follow me on Instagram or you're within my like close friend circle, you you, you don't really know what's happened. And. Uh, it's been, it's been a hot minute, so let's roll the intro, and you may notice it's a new intro. So let's start in January when Quiz came home. You may have seen Quiz in a couple of videos now. He's not really featured heavily because I don't know whether I'm coming or going with that horse. Um, he is the sweetest soul. He is the loveliest boy. He is a 17 hand X racer. He's eight years old. He will be nine in March. He doesn't have a confirmed diagnosis of what is wrong with him, but he is consistently lame. Um, he's maybe two tenths lame 95 percent of the time so yeah we struggle to keep him completely sound uh we're investigating that at the moment and the next steps for him is like x-rays and things but that's costly when you look at kind of what's happened in the last couple of months so we will get a rundown in this video so yeah we bought i bought quiz um quiz came from my previous instructor uh chris he you know i was said i was looking for a dressage horse uh he brought this one for me to view, um, sent me all the details, went to view him, loved him, brought him home. That's kind of a long and short of it. Um, I went to view one, two, went to view two others and had spoken to a couple of people about a couple of others and hadn't gone to view them in the end. Uh, the first mare I viewed uh, with Jazz, who I had on part loan. I think I had her for two weeks before she tried to kill me and I decided I'm good. I didn't want something satanic and I didn't want to put six foot under. Uh, she is the pony in my Lemure haul where I bought my papaya set because I bought that for her. That didn't end well. Then I went to view a lovely five year old, she's four, I think she was five, um, little black mare. She was lovely. She was just really dead to the leg and I didn't want something that I was going to have to properly kick along because if you are new here, I have issues with my legs. I can't always feel them. It's like walking around on pins and needles a lot of the time. So I needed something that was going to respond to my seat, my voice and generally every other cue I can offer and not rely heavily on my leg. Um, basically, I think my ad said something along the lines of must not be a kick along. Um, also, must not be feral. That was kind of my other requirement. And it was something that wasn't insane and something that wasn't dead. Like, dead to the leg. They were my requirements. So yeah, because he came home, he he's had so many issues but since he came home. I viewed him in the October, he came home in the January, and God knows what's gone wrong since then. Um, he fell off the box backwards, and I kind of looked at him and went, oh God, what have I done? Put him in a stable, gave him a nice big hay net, and kind of went from there. Uh, he was advertised to wear a six, nine, seven foot rug. Uh, he wears a six, three. Uh, hopefully he'll wear a six, six next year when he's all muffled up and he's finished growing, but at the moment, a, a 6'3", depending on the brand, it can be a bit big on him, so that kind of is what it is. And I have filmed Chris's introduction video oh, nine or ten times. Um, I have so many different like sections of this video saved to my computer from where I've gone to film it and then gone, I don't want to film it. Yeah, he's not ready. I'm not ready. He's not ready. He's not ready. I'm not ready. I've taken that pony to his first show. I've ridden him four times. None of the times I've had a saddle on, by the way, because I can't get a saddle to fit him. Um, and he tried to deck the saddle fitter when she did come to view him, which is how we ended up with the vet and the farrier and the osteopath and 
lots of vet bills later. So, thoroughbreds, who do it? Who do it to themselves? Me, apparently. So that's kind of Quizzy in a nutshell. His uh, main colour is marine blue. Uh, he's my best bud, and I'm hoping I'll get him sound enough to ride so he can be my paradressus project. And if not, I've bought myself a very large, very overly friendly uh, Labrador with no personal space, no boundaries, uh, and you know, it's like 500 kilos. So, hey, -o. <laughs> I think this is one of those things where if I don't reflect, like, well, deflect and uh, use humour to cope with it, I just cry because I spend nearly four grand on a horse that's just not right and it's not his fault. Uh, he also has a sarcoid on his belly. We're looking at possibly dealing with that next year. Um, at the moment, it kind of doesn't affect him. He's had it since he was three. We found it in his betting from when he was sold as a racehorse, as a three-year-old. It's kind of one of the things. That's just quiz to a T. Um, anything that could go wrong would go wrong, but he's such a sweetie. Um, I don't know, you know if you've watched my Fallock and Fringe unboxing from February, there's a couple of clips of him in there, and he's just... Honestly, he's just the best, and <laughs> I love him, and I tried to sell him. Uh, a couple of times this year because I thought I'd outhorse myself or when B was poorly and I just couldn't, couldn't. So he's stuck with me. Um, if I remember, I'm going to include a couple of clips of him here. I'm just kind of, I will do a full sit down video of like meet my new horse and just quiz to a T, like take you through, probably be January and I'll just take you through the last 12 months of quiz. But that's him. That's pony number one in this update video. Which leads me on to pony number two, which is Mr. Old Faithful, good old River. River is up in Sunderland with me now. He came home in June. I went down by the train and I met my friend Becca and we picked up the two who were on the retirement yard, so River and B. I put them on a box with a company called Red Red's Transport. Red Transport. I will link her down below. She's amazing if you're based in the northeast. I brought them home. We moved off Cleveland Village Livery Yard where I had quiz and we moved just down the road to Inquiry Yard where I could have 24 hour, 7 day a week turnout for the older two and it was just everything we needed. Um, Mr River is doing really well. His arthritis is managing quite well this year. He's currently out in a 50 gram as of the first week of November. He's coped well with the wind, he's coped well with the rain, um, he coped okay with the fireworks. He got a bit wound up but that's just River. Um, yeah, he's doing really well. Uh, he's had a little ride from the kids. My siblings have been down to visit him. He's had lots of apples and carrots. He has had a mild colic episode. That was very, very stressful. Um, we walked him for probably 45 minutes to an hour and I just couldn't get anything to pass. So we popped him in a stable whilst I tried to sort some butte out for him and um, they were bringing the vet. Uh, and as soon as he got into the stable, he pooed. And he went from a quiet lamb that was just quite clearly very, very poorly to slamming his entire body weight against the door to get out because he hates being stabled. And that was when I knew my boy was back and he was fine. Um, couldn't get a butte feed down him. Um, literally went grass skiing to get him back out into the field because he is a terror to put in a stable. Uh, he's seen my new farrier up here. He was really good for the farrier, quiet as a lamb, literally didn't even shift his weight. Like, perfect for the farrier. So that was really nice. And I've restarted his vaccines. So he has had two. He's due his third one, 11th of December. So I'm hoping to vlog that. That'll probably be part of Vlogmas if I get around to filming 12 videos for it. Um, I'm not sure because, again, as you're going to hear throughout this, the last kind of six or 12 months have been an emotional whirlwind. And sitting down in front of the camera is not always what I want to do because I don't think I can quite comprehend how much I have cried and just slept and cried and you know I spent every waking moment sad so we'll see but yeah River's doing really well he's really happy he's enjoying his little herd and yeah he's just he's just a dude if you know River you know he's, he's just the best he's happily retired and uh he shall stay that way uh, I've sat on him a couple of times and he's just, he's just not right he's not happy um he's very excitable um so we're gonna stick to just groundwork with him for now I might be able to suit them out on a hack eventually, but for now, he's very happy just being retired and being River. Um, he features quite a lot on my TikToks because he's still his cuddly self and he still just wants grass and cuddles and snacks and yeah, he's happy for an 18 year old, so that is my River boy. Let's go for pony number three, Miss B. So if you follow my Instagram or my TikTok, you will know that Miss B came home with River. 
in June and she left us in September and she went to the sky and that was a very very difficult decision and I mean it was eight weeks ago exactly today when I'm filming this and I I've put it off because it sucks and I get very upset when I talk about it because B was the best little pony she was sassy she was opinionated she was a gorgeous stamp of what a traditional mountain pony looks like with the little ears to help with the heat conservation and just, you know, the little dainty head and the stocky shoulders and she was just so wonderful and I miss her so, so much. Hence why, if you watch this video in chronological order, you will see that I filmed the next section before this because I've got a very bad feeling that by the end of this I'm going to be a bawling mess probably be edited out so that you don't have to deal with this stuff. So B has had laminitis kind of as long as I've had her. She's had on and off flare-ups, the worst one being 2021, which I'm not sure how much of that I filmed, but she had the vet out quite often for that. She had um, she did a lot of box rest and that was the decision that ultimately led to me sending her to Sam's in the first place. Um, when she was away on retirement, kind of things didn't quite go to plan, so we kind of We'd hoped that she was going to be okay because she was out in a herd with some very experienced um, liveries and yeah, she was on full livery and you know, it was all meant to go swimmingly and it kind of just didn't. She came home morbidly obese. Um, there, there's no other way to describe how fat that pony was when it came home and we knew it was going to be an uphill battle um, shifting the weight off her because how on earth was I going to contain this 11 hand bundle of feralness that didn't want to be touched, didn't want to be caught, didn't want to be handled, didn't want to be loved, didn't even want to be fed at one point. Um, and B was a very food motivated horse. So it was a bit like, well, like, crap, what do we do? So we kind of had a couple of options and we ended up putting her in a little pen and she ended up really liking her pen until we had the storm and she had to go out on the main field um, to reduce the risk of electrocution um, during the storm and you know she had space to run around and it was fine and then we really struggled to get her back into the pen and afterwards she just wasn't right she wasn't right at all um, we brought her in one day for her vaccines and she, she really wasn't right um, I'm talking she came in for what should have been 24 hours and then a month later we're still stood in that state we put a huge bed down the vet came she had butte she had paracetamol she had box rest she had soaked nets she had soaked nets swinging from the ceiling so she couldn't gorge on them she had a bed that she couldn't eat we had um like the like the, the uni bed kind of thing um everything we could do that pony was done you know she had no no sugar like licks, things like that. We put a salt lick in with her to see if that encouraged her to drink more, seeing if drinking helped, because she was notorious for just not drinking water. Um, she could have a 40 litre bucket, and if it wasn't for the fact that I was emptying it to scrub it to refill it every like second or third day, it just wasn't emptying because she just wasn't drinking it. Um, she was a bane, like a proper little tinker for drinking. So we tried lots of different things and we eventually got it to the point where she was ready to go back out into a turnout pen so that was really exciting we put her out in a turnout pen and what three days later she was gone so i got a phone call on the monday saying that she was lame again um that it looked really quite bad and i said right okay so i rang my vet was on holiday so i rang the, the vet that was available i said look something's not right she's an old pony she's got laminitis and I can't keep doing this to her, she's depressed, she's miserable, she's she's broken, um, her spirit is broken, um, you know, this was a pony that normally when you turned it out was dead excited to go out, you know, she dragged you out like a Welsh dragon she was, and she just, yeah, dug her heels in and was like, nah, I'm good, and I was like, mm, that's not right. She wasn't particularly reaching over the fence to touch the other horses, uh, she wasn't particularly going to her soaked hay piles wasn't even particularly moving for a feed bucket and I was like something's really not right um she was obviously getting a feed to get drugs and stuff because she was on paracetamol and butin anything else we could get in her system basically um so I went down after work that night and uh 
Jacob pulled her into the stable and I said, something's really not right. She's, she's not right. So we put her in her jammies and we gave her a big cuddle and then she wolfed down her feed and I said, something's not right. What do you mean? I said, well, she's barely touched her feed for like two weeks at that point and she has just inhaled that. It had butte and paracetamol in it and she inhaled it and I went, she's not right. So we rang the vet the next morning and the first vet tried to tell me that the fact that I'd gone home to a perky pony meant that I should try putting you on for you today, back on to 10, 15 paracetamol a day and you know, oh, two weeks of box rest and you'll be fine. And I hung up the phone and I said to Jake, no, I don't think I can do this. I, I don't think I can physically put her through another two weeks of box rest because it wasn't going to be two weeks. It was never going to be two weeks. So my vet was back off annual leave that day. So I rang my vet and she looked, she kind of, she said to me, you know this pony better than anyone. You know, you've had her four years. What do you think? And I said, I think it's time. And that was the most horrific decision I think I've ever had to make. Um, and despite the fact I had so many people say, yes, you're doing the right thing. It was one of the loneliest decisions I've ever had to make. So she arranged for the vet that was closer to come out to us and she was with us in a flat 45. And um, at some point I do want to make a video on what happened that day specifically because I don't think we talk about it enough. You know, we don't talk about having a plan, we don't talk about having, you know, insurance or a backup plan or a clue of what to do because it is so, so hard to do. And um, yeah, she went that day and she was collected that evening. And uh, she came home two weeks later in her little box and she's on top of my fridge. That's where she'll stay for now. The long and short of it came down to at what point is it no longer ethical to put a pony through box rest and a metric ton of drugs. Um, when the vet arrived she said, Jade, I think she's an organ failure. And I said, I think she is. So that kind of made my decision a little bit easier because she she told me she was ready basically uh, she she was done and um that was really hard because I guess it had had her four years um and she'd had a really really rough life before us and I always said you know I wanted that for me to be happy and to be loved and I think I think she knew she was loved because she was adored um, by me, by Jake, my siblings. Like that pony could not want for anything else in this world. She was spoiled um, in a good way. Because obviously she had, you know, Lammy and potentially the vet thinks she could have had EMS and Cushing's. So it was one of those where we decided it was the right time. So that's kind of where I got up to with the horses that I you know, own. Um should probably also mention that Quiz ended up on a duplicate passport because the passport he got he didn't arrive with a passport. Um which was, you know, a conversation I then had with my vet because Bee's passport is blank. There is nothing in her passport. Um just a name, uh breeding and her markings from when she was born. Um there's no previous owners listed, there's no vaccinations prior to when I owned her, her microchip number was put in when I had a microchip in 2021 and um, that was, you know, tough because no one kind of ever walks you through what you're supposed to do um, when you lose a pony. It's not something you talk about in pony life. So, well, that was depressing enough so I'm gonna let past Jade to take over now with a slightly more happy update. Now poor future Jade who has to edit this is gonna deal with this bit first where I'm gonna jump to the future and tell you all about Miss Willowbrook because I have a new part loan. So two days a week I have a part loan. She is called Willow. She is a 15 to 7 year old chestnut mare. She is also an ex-racer. 
I've got a type, you all know this at this point, and she's just wonderful. Um, she's quite fresh, she's a bit fiery, she's quite strong, but um, her owner's done an absolutely fantastic job getting her to where she is, and I'm really looking forward to our future. Plan is to do a bit of dressage with her. The yard she's on is Cleveland, where I originally had the quiz, and they have a winter dressage league, so I'm hoping to be able to have a crack at that with her as well as try some e-riders, which is why I wanted to mention her in this video, because I've got a horrible feeling that like the next video after this is gonna be like my e-riders November test if I film it. So I was like, I should probably talk about Miss Willoughby. So yeah, she's lovely. She's a sweetheart on the ground. She's genuinely the loveliest girl on the ground. And then on the saddle, I said she's a bit strong, but she's an extra race horse. Uh, what do I expect? Uh, she has a snaffle and a pelham. And I'm trying to get used to the two at the moment. I ride her predominantly in the snaffle because that's why I need the dressage. But we will see because I'm looking at doing the AnyTac class in the e-riders, which means I can ride her in her Pelham um, just because she also has a martingale and things. So that's just kind of where we're at. She is currently um, inheriting some of Chris's saddle pads. So I am fully enjoying having a pony that wants to stand and be groomed and pampered because if you've met my boys, the last thing they want to do is stand still and be cuddled. River has never enjoyed being groomed, especially along his back. He doesn't have any back problems, he's just a pain in the butt. Um, standing still for anyone other than the farrier is just not River's thing. He would much rather be wherever the fresh grass is, so, you know. Quiz obviously has a couple of issues which has made grooming Quiz harder. He has, you know, he had at some point he had back pain and then he's had some neck pain and he's had some leg pains and anything on that horse has hurt at some point, so he isn't the biggest fan of being groomed. He's getting there, and he does quite like a bath, especially if there's food involved. Whereas Willow, you bring her in from the field, stand her in a stable, it doesn't matter what you put in front of her, she will stand and be groomed, and it's lovely. You know, she wants to give cuddles, she wants to give kisses, and she wants to please, and it's just so refreshing, because as much as I adore my boys with all my heart, they are the bane of my existence some days. They're just so frustrating and they're very much wintering out which means i'm leaving all the oils in their coats you know i'm not trying to brush them as much as possible you know i want them to have all the natural protections against the elements because there is limited shelter in our field so i have two woolly mammoths whereas willow is clipped out and um, so she's much shinier she's cl like clean and easy to manage the boys are shiny because they're on good feed um, and they're you know they're healthy shines um but they're very oily because obviously it's winter whereas willow is like that shiny show shine like glowy and it's just it's it's lovely and it's something different and the hope is that willow's going to give me my confidence back and so that when i read back quiz once he's sound and we've dealt with all his residual issues i've not spent you know two years out of the saddle because at the moment when i got on willow for the first time i hadn't ridden in 54 weeks so it's just over a year and that sucked, you know, that was horrific. The only times I'd ridden then were the few times I'd hopped on quiz and walked around bareback or tried around bareback. I hadn't ridden properly. So, you know, it was really nice to get on Miss Willow. We had a little jump and then I've had a couple of individual rides on her since. Like, so I I took on the loan and not just to actually have my viewing ride, I've had her as a loan. And yeah, she's been fantastic so far. She's a good girl to tack up. I mean, she throws her head when I go to put a bit in, but most horses do. Um, she likes to get out with the idea of doing some work. She's very good though, she'll stand and let me untack her before like she goes for a hay net, which is nice, whereas Quiz just wants food. Food is the only priority in that boy's life. So yeah, I'm very much enjoying just having a pony to pamper and ride, and I'm you know hoping that you'll see in the next couple of videos some, like I don't wanna say huge improvements in my riding, but like you'll see the confidence in me come back because I will admit the first time I got on her I stood at the mountain block and went what am I doing and then I swung my leg up onto this chestnut mare and went I'm gonna die and then I took her into the arena and I walked around and I was like okay we went for a little trot I was like yeah no this is great and then she went right we're going into canter now and I said no no we're, I'm, I'm good Let, let's stick to her she said, no no I said we're cantering um, and then she decided we were cantering at the jump and well the rest is history and I feel very safe on her which is nice we had a little instant um, on our third ride where and another pony spooked her and she kind of took off and I was like right this is it I'm coming off you know and I'd kind of accepted that but I talked to her and I asked her nicely to come back down and she came straight back into my hands and I was like wow because the last couple of years I've massively lost my confidence riding especially especially riding horses that aren't you know the most generic bog average riding school bush button ponies like I lost my confidence 
hugely. Um, you may have noticed actually that my, is it all three? Yeah, my last three dressage league tests from 2022 never made it onto YouTube. Um, there's a couple of clips of them on TikTok, there's a couple of clips of them on Instagram, but they never made it onto YouTube. All my other tests are voiced over and on YouTube because I was proud of them and I wasn't proud of them. I lost my confidence, I lost my bottle and uh, that hurt. So I'm very much enjoying getting my confidence back again and kind of slipping back into my dressage boots and my dressage ways and really going back to basics with Milo. Like I'm talking, am I doing the right diagonals? Is my 20 meter circle perfect? Is my square hold square? Are my transitions smooth? Like I went right back to basics with her. In fact, my second and third ride with her, I only did walk and trot. And you know, people were like, oh, what are you doing walk and trot for? It's because the foundations of every good rider start in walk. And I was very much raised in the mindset of if you can't do it in walk, you can't do it in trot. If you can't do it in trot, you can't do it in canter. If you can't do it in canter, you can't take it in an open space. And that's kind of the morals that I still stick to, and like the, like the, the compass that guides like my riding. I am looking at possibly getting some more lessons again because I have missed them. Uh, I'm just looking for a new riding centre to do them at. Uh, I'm considering Merton, which is where I did my BHS Silver Award. Um, I'm also considering Washington RDA because I know a lot of the coaches there and a couple of the horses. So we will see. But for now, I'm just thoroughly enjoying having a horse to ride and one that is so willing and gives so much back. So that is kind of like all the pony updates. Um, other than that, the last couple of months have been really sucky because we moved out of student accommodation into our first kind of apartment. Um, at one point we ended up homeless um, just because there was an issue with the contractor here. So we ended up staying in our friend's caravan on his driveway for a week. Uh, we stayed in an Airbnb the week before that. And we had some temporary accommodation before that. So it's not kind of been smooth sailing this year to say the least. Um, Obviously I took some time away from my degree and um, I went back and decided I was going to finish that in September so I have started going back to that. Uh, I've got a wonderful placement this time with a group of explorers which is the 14 to, 16, 14 to 18 category of scouts. Um, obviously we have our home, we have our roof over our head and it feels like everything is finally kind of falling into place and um, it's still tough I'll be honest you know especially because quiz is going to need some extensive extensive veterinary work um the x-rays alone are going to have set me back between three and five hundred pounds uh, when we lost b that was a thousand pounds um on a random tuesday in september that i wasn't expecting to have to drop um, we did have a just giving page and we were very very lucky to get some donations from that um which went towards her veterinary bills and her cremation fees um we had her individually cremated so that kind of obviously brought the price up a bit um but she came home in a beautiful casket and gas tube, so you'll see me look over there because she's on top of the fridge and I can see the fridge from up here. Um, but it's nice because it means I can still see her and I can still talk to her um, and give her kisses, which helps. So yeah, I've started a full-time job. Um, I work selling solar panels and Jake has a new full-time job um, in like mail and posting and things, um, which he is enjoying. And it means that we kind of got that financial stability to be able to do all these nice things with the horses like you know having willow on loan and being able to spoil the boys with all the treats and all the rugs um in fact there is a gs equestrian hall coming in i think my maybe it's not the next video after this it'll be the one after that which includes some essential winter and autumn or autumn winter purchases that i've made and yeah it's kind of just been a real roller coaster couple of months and I'm glad to be seeing the end of it and um, we're very much looking forward to spending Christmas in our first home like proper home and um, so we need to go and buy a tree to decorate with but I'm hoping to do some vlogmas and while YouTube is not my like top priority that's always going to be myself my mental health and my horses let's put a joke <laughs> but it's it's up there on things that I want to explore again because I feel like a lot of the opportunities I've had over the last couple of years with brands and with events and things have come from having a platform of Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, you know, being able to say that I cover them all and that I vlog and that, you know, I'm very passionate about what I do and be able to show that on camera. So I'm back and 
I don't know if it's going to be a forever thing. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, do a couple of months, get to January and realise that actually going back to TikTok or Instagram is for me. You know, Instagram is my main platform and it's, you know, a lot of my side income. Um, all the money I make from influencing goes back into influencing or into the horses. Um, any money that doesn't uh, usually ends up being the equivalent of what I donate to charity each year. Um, I do follow a couple of charities and I hope to be able to talk about them again soon. But yeah, no, that's kind of my overall update. Um, the world caught fire, it kept spinning and I couldn't get off. So <laughs> here we are now. Um, I'm getting there. My mental health has kind of taken a huge dip and I'm trying to reach out and get professional support for that again, um, which is a huge step and obviously quite scary to do. Obviously I now work, which is a lot on me physically and mentally, and I'm finding myself really burnt out. And then the buses in my area decided to go on strike uh, for 12 weeks, so I'm feeling very trapped and locked in, which is kind of the other motivation behind getting back into YouTube, is it gave me something to sit and do in an evening because I can't go and see the horses, because there's no buses to the yard, um, and getting the metro up to Bolton and then walking across to Cleveland is just not particularly safe as an individual um, petite woman uh, at like six seven o'clock at night uh, and then again at like nine o'clock at night to get back so i i'm very very lucky to have a wonderful yard who see the boys for me in the week and then obviously i see them on a friday saturday sunday so it is what it is yeah i've got lots of video ideas and i'm hoping that you know i'm gonna be able to put most of them into action you'll get to see them all very very soon so yeah without further ado i'm gonna roll what should be my new outro and i look forward to seeing you all very very soon um, and I think the final thing I should mention quickly, because I'm always going to forget because it doesn't come naturally to me, is this is my Honest Riders base layer. It was very kindly gifted from them and I have uh, an affiliate link and a discount code that will be down below. It says, um, is it Riders on this arm? Yeah, Riders on this arm and Honest on this arm. I'm not sure how well you can see it, so I'll move it back into the light, you can kind of see it better. So yeah. Um, and yeah, I love this. I think it's called the training top. Um, it's got mesh down the back, so I'm going to turn around and show you that when it's on. So that's kind of the back of it there. Um, so the thumb loops on the hands and like the mesh gets here, get to here. But yeah, you may see a couple more ads and affiliate links popping up in descriptions and stories and things just because obviously I'm trying to make the extra income up towards quizzes surgery. So yeah, if you'd like to support me uh, down below, there is affiliate links, there is a buy me coffee page, there is my just giving page, and I think that is everything. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below. Um, the link to my channel will be up here if you'd like to subscribe that way, and a recent-ish, ish, possibly a most advised kind of video will be on one of these sides here. And yeah, thank you very much for all your support and the outpouring of love we've had on all of the socials. We look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.